Howdy Pilgrim! In this exercise, you'll learn to structure your code for animation programming on the canvas. We're also going to demonstrate how to initialize canvas applications to place all of your JavaScript in the head of the document in order to keep your documents more logical and tidy. JavaScript more belongs in the head section of the document, just like the styling. So our two goals are to properly initialize our canvas application in case it's a very complex canvas application or maybe it's a very complex game we want to know how to properly initialize it so we can have our body element stay clear of things like scripting tag so we want to have our scripting tags up in the head element and you can refer to an external scripting tag after you get done programming your application you can just make it an external file and then refer to it up in the head of your document so we're going to talk about properly initializing complex canvas applications and we're going to talk about structuring your code for animation programming. Okay, so in the head element of our document we have a scripting tag open and inside the first thing we're going to do is initialize the canvas application. So we'll add an event listener to the window object for the on load event and then when that load event fires we're going to run a function called init canvas open close parentheses semicolon now init canvas is going to be the function that initializes the canvas and gets it ready for programming so let's just copy that control C and right above our window dot on load event function we're gonna type in function init canvas initialize canvas opening curly brace and closing curly brace now here is where we're going to access our CTX variable the CTX object and I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this style element because we don't need to see that now the next thing we're going to do inside of our initialize canvas function is we're going to set a couple of variables. We're going to call this canvas width. And that's going to be equal to ctx.canvas.width. Then we also want another variable called canvas height. And that's going to be equal to ctx.canvas.height property. Then we'll put a semicolon. That way we have easy access to the canvas height and the canvas width within our code. Now I set up the window load event function like this that way you can run more code inside of it if you need to. Maybe you want to run another function or a few lines of code in the on load event of the window. You can do that here within this function still. So really that's the basics of proper initialization of a canvas application. You just do everything you need to do on your canvas inside of your init canvas function. Now very quickly I want to jump over to YouTube because one of you guys placed a comment on my last video that I want to address and the comment is from Samuel Haycock and he says out of curiosity will you be linking your canvas bootcamp with a bit of oop so what I'm going to do is in the very next video tutorial we're going to show you how to add assets to your canvas in an object oriented fashion so basically they'll be object oriented assets that you'll be adding to your canvas and that's really handy when it comes to game programming and any kind of application programming on the canvas so yes we'll be dealing with oop and we'll demonstrate how to add assets to your canvas in an object oriented fashion in the very next video okay now that we have proper initialization out of the way and taken care of we'll show you the code structure for animation so inside of our init canvas function, we're going to create a new function and name it animate just so everybody knows what its purpose is. Opening curly brace, go down a couple of lines and put in your closing curly brace. Now inside of function animate, we're going to be able to access this CTX object no problem. Now what you want to avoid doing is creating your var for your CTX variable inside of your animate function. Unless you're doing something very simple and basic. But if you have a complex animation or set of animations, you want to make sure that within the animate loop that it's built very efficiently all of the code inside of the animate function because this function is going to fire off many, many, many times per second. And you don't want it overloaded with things it doesn't need to be overloaded with. For instance, creating the CTX variable or recreating it every time the function fires off, which is many, many, many times per second. So my point is you keep the code inside of your animate function as slim as possible. Now the first thing I'm going to do is type in ctx.save which is a method used for animation purposes when you want to restore all the transform effects on the canvas. And then you put ctx.restore after you run all of your changes on the canvas. So you put changes happen 
here. And this is where you would draw to your canvas. Or let's just say draw here. Now within an animation loop, you also have to clear the rectangle. So right after you save the previous layer on the stack, we're going to ctx.clearrect, which we already covered. And that's the method that lets you erase the canvas. And you have to erase the canvas every time your animate function runs or else you're just going to get everything's going to look like it's being drawn. So that's why you have to clear the rectangle. And to do that is simple. You just put in the coordinates for a rectangle and within that rectangle that's what gets erased. So we put 0 x 0 y and we're just going to use c w which is the canvas width and c height which is the canvas height. And We already established those variables up here. So we're clearing the whole canvas. Now I'm going to show you the contrast of using ctx.save and ctx.restore that way you guys can see when it is handy to use those two methods you don't always need them so in order to make this animate function run many 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 times per second to animate things we're gonna type in var animate interval is equal to set interval and the two parameters we're going to feed the set interval method the code that we want to run in our case this is an animate function and if you put this at 1000 milliseconds, it'll run every second. But we want it to run very, very fast. So I'm going to put it on 30. So what's happening is every 30 milliseconds, this animate function is going to fire off, which creates the animation. And notice how we're putting our variable outside. We're setting the interval outside of the animate function, right outside of it. And we're putting it into a variable. That way we can easily stop the animation when we need to. Now if you were to run this right now, you're not going to see anything because you haven't drawn anything to your canvas yet. So I'll put in a magenta rectangle that's 50 wide by 50 high. It's set at 0 and 0 coordinates to be in the top left corner. Now if you run this right now, you'll see that it's stationary. It's not doing anything because you're not animating any of the properties. And that's what animation is all about on the canvas, is adjusting properties dynamically. So just for demonstration purposes, let's animate the Y position so this travels down the screen in an animated fashion. So let's go outside of our animate function. Let's create another variable called Y. We'll make that equal to 0 by default. Now we'll take that Y variable and we'll put it here for the Y coordinates of where that rectangle should be drawn. Now we can just put Y plus plus. So the first time the animate function fires off, Y is going to be equal to 0. The second time animate function fires off, y will be equal to 1, and so on and so on and so on. y will just keep incrementing. So let's refresh, and now we see we have an animation of where the little rectangle is traveling down the screen. Now what I'm going to do is grab that rectangle, go down a couple of lines, and make another rectangle. Just make this one blue, any color you want. These can also be images or any other shapes. And this one we're going to set at 0, y. And we're going to affect the x so it travels on the other axis and we'll just put the x variable up here say x is equal to zero and then we're also going to x plus plus and i'll see what we get okay now we're going to demonstrate the importance of clearing the rectangle or erasing the canvas every time this function runs i'm going to comment out that line now watch you see, that's not the results you want unless you really want those kind of results. So you're clearing the rectangle. That way it gets erased every single time. That way you get the appearance of objects moving instead of lines being drawn. Now let's see what exactly what ctx.save and ctx.restore are doing for us. We're going to experiment with that by putting in rotate. So for this first rectangle, right before it's drawn, I'm going to rotate the canvas and then before the second one is drawn I'm going to rotate the canvas yet again to a different angle. Let's put this one on point 0.3 and the next one on point 0.8. Actually put this one on minus point 0.3. Now let me comment out ctx.save and ctx.restore and let's take a look at the effect. And that's not the effect I want. Now what I want to do is save this, the last layer in the stack in the animation stack and then restore it at the bottom and look what I get now see a massively different effect now a lot of people ask me what save and restore are used for and there's your evidence right there that's why you use save and restore 
I'm going to remove these rotate methods. There, so that's a good structure for animation. Now, if you ever need to stop the animation, you can just clear interval on this variable. So I'll just use a click. So if anybody happens to click the canvas, it'll stop the animation. So let me go right under my animate interval variable. And I'm putting in a new event listener for the canvas of click. So we say ctx.canvas add event listener of click. And when that event fires off, we're going to run this code clear interval on the animate interval variable. Now watch, I'll just click the canvas and it stops the animation. So that's how you can effectively stop your animations at any time. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I've explained the ctx.restore and save. I've explained why we clear the rectangle each time the animate function runs. And we want to make sure that we don't clog the animate function with creating new variables or recreating the CTX object every time the animate function runs. So you can keep all of that stuff up here above the animate function because the animate function runs so many times per second that you want to have it as efficiently programmed, all the code inside of it, as efficiently programmed as you can. Okay, so that completes structuring your code for animation programming and properly initializing your Canvas applications in the next exercise, we're going to learn all about how to add assets to your canvas in an object-oriented manner.